teaspoons of sugar Bring the front back. then we have green onions I have about I have one green onion sliced really thin then I have some chili powder I'm gonna put about a teaspoon and then I have toasted sesame seed that's kind of crushed so this is the unhauled toasted sesame seed that's been crushed. They sell it at the store like this, so <laughs> you don't have to crush it yourself in the mortar. And then about a teaspoon of sesame oil. And that's it, that's our sauce. We're just gonna give this a quick stir. This is a good basic sauce to have for anything. If you wanna, um, like for pancake, the kimchi, uh, the green onion pancakes or jeon, um, anything that's pan fried that needs a sauce, this is a good all around sauce too. Mm. So our sauce is done. So for a batter, I have about one and a half cup of cake flour and uh, one teaspoon of baking soda so we're not gonna make as much batter as we did in the Japanese tempura batter because you'll see why and we're gonna um, we're gonna make the batter around the same consistency as the Japanese one so we're gonna add about a cup of water and then you're gonna kind of have to um, adjust the um, thickness. So this is a little bit thick. And a little more. Just use cold water. This is right from the fridge. This is my drinking uh, reverse osmosis water. <laughs> okay. When it's like a crepe batter thickness, that's a good thickness right there. So what's different about the Korean um, vegetable tempura is that um, the vegetables are all julienne together like this. So I have about half, half a cup of uh, sweet potato. Then I have about one and a half cup of uh, russet potato. The key characteristic of the, of the Korean tempura is that it needs to have the rusted. Then I have about um, half a cup of onion julienne, green onions, half a cup, half a cup of carrot, and then this is the perilla leaf, genni. So this is what it looks like when you go to a Korean grocery store. Um, what I did was I cut them into julienne uh, thin strips, and we're gonna put it in here. And then I found these cute little rice cakes. <laughs> so 
So I thought we would uh, we just should uh, tempura this too. It's like I found it at the Korean market and I bought it. So before I go ahead with the Korean um, tempura, I'm gonna do the rice cakes first. I wanna see how they come out. Just for myself, so I'm not gonna put a lot. Okay, so when you fry something small like this, you gotta be careful. <laughs> They're so freaking cute. <laughs> they look like they look they look like little butts. While the rice cakes are frying in there, I'm going to toss all my vegetables with about half a cup of flour, all-purpose flour, so that they get coated evenly. This and just put it into the pork batter. <laughs> so, the Korean one is a little different because, okay, I'm gonna put all of this. We're actually mixing all these durian pieces together. And then if it's, in a, if it's a little thick, add a little bit of water. Bring the funk back. Because we have some extra flour in here from a... Uh, Like a few tablespoons more of water. Okay, this is perfect. So, this one, what you do is you kind of like mix it, make sure it's mixed really well together. Then you're gonna gather about this much. Like, you know, so that it's comfortable for you to put in your mouth and eat. Don't make it like this thing. <laughs> I've seen some people make it that way on uh, YouTube just so that um, they get the views but I'm gonna do it so that the way I would I would eat it you know so then you just drop it in like that and it will also kind of like come apart too so oh, yeah. Look at this. This is the difference between the Korean version and the Japanese version. The Japanese one, you fry each vegetable separately. The Korean one, you kind of like... Make it so that you just have everything in one bite. Every flavor in one bite. So a funny story about uh, tempura. My mom used to make tempura for us and she, you know, she was a working mom so... When she made it, she made a big batch. <laughs> I mean like, maybe like four times this. Because she was feeding three growing boys, you know? Um, and she used to do the squid also. Uh, tempura squid. And, the, oh my god, we ate so much of it. And back then, we didn't know that you uh, make like a sauce for the tempura. So we used to just dip everything in soy sauce. And soy sauce is really salty when you just have it by itself, you know? So the when we dip it in soy sauce, we get thirsty. And we drink a lot of water. And when you mix oil and water together, oh, three boys running to the bathroom with one bathroom. <laughs> it was, but uh, you know, back then it was so fun growing up in the 80s. Oh. We would play outside all day long, not, not a worry in the world. 
Nowadays, you can't do that. You need to watch where your kids are at all the time, you know? Anyways, <laughs> so enough about that. So you see how, oh my god, look how golden brown that is. Delicious. So most of these are gonna go into the freezer because I'm not gonna be able to eat. Like I didn't even make a lot and this this makes a lot. This this was just half a rusted potato that I cut up. I'm really curious about these um, little rice cakes. Oh, it's so good. I'm onto something. I bet this would be delicious with um, like the. Um, the sauce from our Korean fried chicken. You put this in there. Oh, actually, the Korean fried chicken restaurants fry rice cake without the batter, just the rice cake itself, and then tosses it into the fried chicken. So with the batter, it'll go oh. on. So good. Look at that, look how... And then since this is julienne, what you're looking for is the golden brown color and it's ready. Because the vegetables are all thin. And it's gonna be done in like maybe two, two to three minutes. Less than, less than three minutes. So the street vendors usually sell these along with like um, other temp or their fried food like the shrimp, squid, and um, they sell it like also the takoki. So this goes well with takoki. Yeah, so main thing is don't be scared of the oil. <clears throat> so take your um, vegetable and just go right on top. Close to the oil as you can and just gently release. And if you're really kind of afraid, you could use a spoon if you wanted to. You could use two spoons. But I, I think if you are careful enough, you know, you shouldn't get burned. <laughs> so you should see my arms. Back um, when I had the tempura truck, it was like burned everywhere. I still have some of the scars. There's some here, here, and here, and here. <laughs> it will be a while. <laughs> Maybe when I'm old and wrinkly, the scars will go away. But <laughs> I still have some some of the scars from uh, when I had the tempura truck. Oh. This is, I wish I lived around family. Uh, my family all lives in LA area, so, you know? I can't really take these to them since I'm in uh, Arizona. My friends are all in LA, LA too. <laughs> and in Hawaii, there's quite a few in Hawaii. Okay, so see how fast that went? It's not even three minutes, it's done. When it's golden brown, that means the and then you're you're also hearing looking and hearing for the bubbles. So if there's a lot of bubbles, like when you first put it in, and that's not ready, right? Obviously, because you're gonna see and hear the bubbles. So the bubbles are the Liquids that's in the food escaping into the oil and reacting with the oil to make that sound. Yeah, 
You could also take some seaweed, shred it, and put it in here. That would be delicious too. Not the seasoned one with the um, salt on it already. The ones you use for sushi or um, kimpa. In the next video, I'm gonna do kimpa. Instead of doing fried food all the time, I'll do something healthy. <laughs> Those of you that don't know what kimbap is, it's uh, basically it's rice roll. Uh, that's what it means. Seaweed rice roll. That's what uh, it translates in Korean. Kimbap is basically seaweed, rice that's seasoned with salt and a little sesame oil, and then vegetables and sometimes meat in there, but uh, we'll do a vegan version and we're gonna make it really delicious. Okay, so I just I just did the video on uh, <laughs> Japanese tempura and I had a big plate of the uh, fried food, so this is gonna be basically the end of my video because I'm not gonna sit here and eat another plate of fried food <laughs> or I'm gonna be really sick. I'll just have one. Oh, I'll just show you how to how I would plate this. So I found some pea shoots at the Korean market. Um, I'm just gonna add a little sesame oil to it. A few shots of soy sauce, and then a little bit of sugar. And just toss this. And I wouldn't do this ahead of time because it's gonna start wilting. So I, I would do it just before serving. The sprouts here. Oh, that smells so good. Then I would put. Bring the front back. Looks delicious, doesn't it? I'm just gonna eat one. <laughs> but I wanna eat the pea sprouts. Mm. Delicious. I'm gonna try the rice cake in the sauce. Mm. So good. I'm looking for a small piece. <laughs> Here it is. That's a good one. So I can see the sweet potato here. Because the sweet potato, I didn't take out the skin. And then the regular russet potato. Some uh, onions. And carrot. And the perilla leaf. Dunk it into my sauce. Mm -hmm. Delicious. I just can't eat any more fried food because I just had a giant plate of tempura. <laughs> and the, because the temperature was right, it's not greasy. And it doesn't feel greasy when I'm eating it. Mm. I'm gonna eat the rest of my... Uh, Bring the funk back. This will be delicious with cilantro. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching my video. <laughs> if you like this video, press the like. Subscribe if you haven't. Share it with all your friends. In the next video, I'll do kimbap. So we'll do um, a vegan kimbap. 
Let's do like a normal size and then one giant one, like a ginormous kimbap. I like I like that word, ginormous. <laughs> but anyways, um, thank you for watching. Um, I'll see you next time. Okay, bye.